Hello, I'm Sally Spencer Thomas, CEO and co-founder of the Carson J. Spencer Foundation. One of our key programs of the foundation is Working Minds, and the goal of Working Minds is to help employers develop a comprehensive approach to suicide prevention. So in this video, I'm going to talk a little bit about what a comprehensive approach looks like and how we developed our model. Uh, for about a year and a half, we did some significant research and development work to figure out what employers would be most able to use and where the gaps were and so forth. We conducted a number of focus groups, in-depth interviews with business leaders, HR managers, employee assistance professionals, and so forth. We looked at the literature, we looked at the research, we did some environmental scans of what workplaces were saying about mental health and suicide prevention and so forth, and we came to a number of conclusions. Um, the first and probably most important finding that we had was some research that was done in the late 1990s um, on the U.S. Air Force. The U.S. Air Force uh, leaders decided that um, it was unacceptable that the men and women who were willing to, to give up their lives to protect our country were then taking their own lives. And so they developed this very significant comprehensive approach to suicide prevention that got support from the leaders of the Air Force. Um, and I do think that leadership's buy-in is a very critical factor to the success of, well, anything, but certainly to the success of something as um, difficult to, to implement as a comprehensive suicide prevention program. Um, so as you can see here, the uh, comprehensive approach to suicide prevention has multi facets to it. It has a number of different components, including um, screening, um, providing state-of-the-art mental health services that are accessible uh, and well-trained in suicide risk assessment and intervention, um, making sure that um, postvention or critical incident needs are managed well in the aftermath of a suicide crisis, both from a crisis management standpoint and from a bereavement support standpoint, um, making sure that mental health services are promoted and that um, people who are uh, at risk for suicide are linked to care early in the process through education and gatekeeper training and so forth. Um, making sure that um, social marketing is sending messages out, letting people know that it's okay to ask for help. Um, and then educating the population on warning signs and risk factors, uh, what mental illnesses look like, like depression or bipolar disorder, post-traumatic stress disorder, a number of these mental illnesses that are um, high risk for suicidal behavior. And then some more upstream approaches, such as um, building life skills, so coping and conflict resolution, stress management, those kinds of things that just help people with their day-to-day -day functioning. And then finally, per creating a sense of belonging or a network, a social network that is supportive of a person um, and can help carry them through a crisis. Um, so all of these components together um, really help create a comprehensive approach to suicide prevention with the policies and protocols to support it. And in the aftermath of this uh, five-year implementation with the Air Force, they found a significant decrease in suicide death, which was very encouraging. And so this model has become the model for a number of different systems, whether it's schools, colleges and universities, states, tribal communities, and now the workplace. Um, in addition, our research discovered that um, there were some really important places for workplaces to start. Um, prevention and screening uh, seem to be low cost, high impact types of interventions that workplaces could begin this comprehensive approach. Screening tools are usually very low cost, um, they're not very time consuming, and really in a very short period of time, we can screen people out into um, probably low risk to potentially high risk and start linking those people to care. There are several online tools that are readily available for employers to use. Um, in addition, another low-cost, high-impact intervention that workplaces can do is to promote the National Suicide Prevention Lifeline, 1-800-273-8255. This is a um, national number that operates 24-7 and is answered by credentialed crisis counselors who have specialized training in suicide de-escalation. They route locally, so whoever answers the phone um, is usually very well aware of some local resources to refer a person to. In addition, um, the employers told us that if we're going to do some kind of significant training, make it easy. Uh, don't make us go through a whole bunch of 
you know, really in-depth stuff. We don't have a lot of money. We don't have a lot of time. And show us that it's cost effective. Um, and we also want to know who else is doing it. So uh, let us know that as well. And so these are some things that we learned um, in our research. Uh, what was needed was some toolkits, some kind of quick and easy, here's what we're looking for, here's what we need to do, types of menus, flow charts, and so forth um, that employers could kind of pick up and run with. Um, they also have said, um, give us some non-traditional services because there's a certain part of our population that is really unlikely to seek traditional mental health care. So if you can um, give us some um, really competence-based uh, skill building types of um, interventions like, you know, seven steps to uh, decreasing your stress or anger management 101 where you can actually master skills and see that demonstrated mastery along the way. Those were some of the things that the workplaces were requesting. Um, and then really some very importantly, some very diverse and saturated communication strategies were also something that many, much of our research endorsed. So top-down communication that says this matters, this is important, we are putting our resources behind this, really helps get things going. Um, the National Action Alliance for Suicide Prevention is starting to release a number of videos of Fortune 500 CEOs who are giving that exact message that it is time in the uh, economy of a brain-based um, workplace that we focus on taking care of that very, very important aspect of human functioning, our brain. And uh, they really talk very um, strongly about the importance of leadership to get behind this effort. Um, so that's, that's one form of communication. In addition, kind of regular newsletters on this, regular brown bag lunches, uh, kind of this saturated communication where all of this communication leads to some similar messages about if you're distressed, seek help, or here's what to look for for someone that you're worried about, and here's some warning signs and risk factors and what to do if you're worried. Um, so the final piece of um, the comprehensive approach is really about how we take care of the aftermath of a suicide in a workplace. And so in the next section, I'll talk a little bit more about that. Mm -hmm.